champion Steve Reno of Southbridge, Massachusetts faces the challenge of Bob DeBadgis of Franklin, Massachusetts on Hamilton Bowling. Hi everybody, welcome to Cattles and Bowling, I'm Don Gillis. Happy to welcome you here to the fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Cattles and Bowling's total pinfall determining our winner. Both of our bowlers will be rewarded with permanent souvenirs from the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. We also have guaranteed prize money of $1,200. $700 goes to the winner, $350 goes to the runner-up, $50 available to the winner of each string, and obviously if they tie in a string, then we would split it at $25 apiece. I have in my hand a $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. That goes to our marksman of the day, the bowler who has the most marks. Our runner-up will receive an additional prize, a $50 gift certificate from the Super 7 Tire Dealers. There are other ways that our bowlers can go away a little bit richer. I'll tell you about those as the program continues, but right now, let's meet today's bowlers, shall we? <laughs> Bob DeBadges comes back for another try, huh? Yeah, a few years ago. <laughs> well, uh, I saw that uh, one of our former champions, who also is the man who defeated you the last time back there, <laughs> and I asked you, what is he doing here? And you actually, you, you know that son of a gun, Rich Cardoli. Oh, yeah, story, huh? we, we bowl together, and uh, he's here to heckle me, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I don't think he'd do anything like that. Okay, Steve, you're rolling along, although you had a little scare last week, I finding yourself... I couldn't believe a 114 and a 108 for your first two strings, huh? Oh, I wasn't getting the ball out there. i got to fire it. You know, you stay on top of your game. Well, you can't up. one thing that I have often commented about guys like you, and you amaze me, really, people like you, uh, who can fire the ball with as much action and still have the accuracy that you have. Does it take a lot of practice, or is it natural? Oh, I've been practicing for a lot of years, so... A little of your father. A little of both. A little bit to do with that, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good luck to you. Thank you. And... What should I say? Better luck the second time for you? That good sounds luck. good. <laughs> All right. We'll be underway right after this, everybody. Leading off today's challenger, Bob DeBadges of Franklin. Three pins, seven and ten, with three pieces of wood. Nice shot, but the seven didn't go. Bob has a league average of 120, a high single of 182, a high triple of 450. He begins with a 10. He had a 671 winning his roll-off. Married, father of three, and employed as a package designer. Bob representing Pico's Bolodrome in Franklin, Massachusetts. Piece of wood rolling around a little bit over in the right. What he's faced with are the four pin, eight pin, and seven. Just a little bit too far to the left on that four pin. It's so delicate when you're rolling from 60 feet away. A small ball and the skinny pins, but that's why we love this game so much, because it is a challenge. Our defending champion, Steve Reno. Half Worcester right. Steve's average, 128. High single 187, high triple 481. He had a 663 to win his roll off, and he's representing the Hippodrome lanes. Steve is single, employed as a grinder. The goalposts are there, so it's an eight. shot six and seven but there's a piece of wood that is to the left of that six pin but it's possible it's just possible he could make it move nope that piece of wood was not touched the one that was on the angle ten
challenger Bob DeBadgers again. There it is. There's the hammer. Otherwise, we would have two strikes in a row, but we have an uh, opportunity here to see two marks in a row. The six pin has to be picked up by challenger Bob DeBadges. Quite a reaction to that. Steve Reno. One three six. Is he going to get it? Nope. Another ten. One three seven. Another 10. And our first check on the scoreboard. After four boxes, our challenger, Bob DeBadges of Franklin 48, our defending champion, Steve Reno of Southbridge 38. Just on the line, rolling in the fifth box of this first string. Two and seven. Two and ten. What are you saying, Don? Two and ten. Nice shot. Bonus. Six, leaving the four horsemen right side. Bob knew as soon as he delivered that ball that he was not going to get the head pin. Got the other three. And it's a nine. Steve Reno. One, two, seven, ten. Good piece of wood to the left of number two. That's a rare miss. Nine. So the only mark so far belong to our challenger, Bob DeBadges. A strike in the third. A spare in the fifth. Spread eagle. Release that one a little bit too soon so that he didn't catch the three. 
nine. Another strike. Everything except three and nine. Now a piece of wood rolling in. Well, it's not sure whether it wants to stay or not. Right on it. Two marks in a row. And as just about everybody who watches us all the time knows, three marks in a row, any combination of strikes or spares in the same string will establish a bonus of $50, and each subsequent consecutive mark on that same string would be worth $50 a piece as long as you can keep it going. Same two pins, three and nine. Fast difference, though. For Bob DeBadges, it made a spare. And for Steve Reno, it made his second shot more difficult. Ten. Dal Giglio keeping score on that big scoreboard. Half Worcester left. John Boyle keeping score beside me. Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee. Oh, those socks are very conservative today. And that reminds me. But I will not get to it until after we see what Bob DeMagis does, because he has two marks in a row. Just three. And they were in the right corner. Buddy comes back and makes it for $50 in bonus money. This one is four for the fill. Leaving the four horsemen left plus the five and eight. Nope, it will not be four in a row. One twenty six. I'll get to what I was going to tell you about Ralph Socks in a moment, but uh, not until we get in the second string. Steve Reno has gone now into the ninth box looking for his first mark in the opening string. And he's still looking for it. Nine. So Steve is going to need a mark just to break a hundred. not break a hundred and here is a man with a 128 league average well, I guess that's what averages are for Steve shaking his head he can't believe what he has just put up on the scoreboard and we will remind you of what it is at the end of one our challenger, Bob DeBadges, 126. Our defending champion, Steve Reno, 93.
In the middle string, our defending champion leads it off. He is Steve Reno. Another box for the mark. A uh, ten. I mentioned when we saw the shot of Ralph uh, that I often mention his socks and uh, Oscar and Emily Wallen of Metapan. Not quite. Took the time to send a letter saying uh, your bowling show. We watch every Saturday. In fact, it's one of the few television shows we do watch. Fair. And then they say, I've heard you mention Ralph's socks and his shoes. Well, Ogden Nash also said something about woolen socks, and here it is for better or worse. Oh, Oscar and Emily. All right. I will try to read this because it is interesting, and it does follow along with the Argyle socks that I have often mentioned that Ralph Beard. By Ogden Nash. Woolen socks, woolen socks, full of color, full of clocks. Plain and fancy, yellow, blue, from the counter beam at you. Oh, golden fleece, oh, magic clocks, oh, irresistible woolen socks. Oh, happy haberdashers clerk amid that galaxy to work. And now it festers, now it rankles, not to have them round your ankles. Now with your conscience do you spar. They look expensive, and they are. Now, conscience whispers, you ought not to, and human nature says you've got to. Woolen socks, woolen socks, first you buy them in a box. You buy them several sizes large, fit for Hercules or a barge. You buy them thus because you think these lovely woolen socks may shrink. At home, you don your socks with ease. You find the heels contain your knees. You realize with saddened heart their toes and yours are far apart. You take them off and mutter, bosh, you up and send them to the wash. Too soon, too soon, the socks return. Too soon, the horrid truth you learn. Your woolen socks cannot be worn unless a midget child is born. And either sockless you must go or buy a sock for every toe. Woolen socks, woolen socks, infuriating paradox. Hosiery, wonderful and terrible, heaven to wear and yet unwearable. The man enmeshed in such a quandary can only hie him to the laundry. And while his socks are hung to dry, wear them once as they're shrinking by. What a nice shot by C. Reno. Seven. That's the fill. And yes, he gets three in a row and fifty dollars in bonus money. Badgers has $100 in bonus money, 50 for winning the first string, and 50 for three marks in a row. One, two, four, and nine. That head pin wouldn't go. Big hit. All right, a three pin to pick up for a spare. Hit. That's it. So as we break once again to take a check on the scoreboard, we find that each of our bowlers will have a bonus ball to roll when we come back, and in pins already down, it is Reno 53, the Badgers 38. Marks in a row already up on the board. Here comes our defending champion, Steve Reno. is the fill and he's left with 
a nice little 610. Make that four marks in a row. And his eyes opened a little wide that time because he came perilously close to missing that one. Nine. And one more pin to pick up. The seven. Waiting for a piece of wood to settle down that now is about where the two pin would be. Whoa, boy! Were there some horseshoes on that one? Wow! Oh, oh yes, he's got a big grin on his face again. Working on a spare, and Bob DeBadges gets seven, and Ralph Stewart needs to call time in order to check to see whether this piece of wood is behind the Deadwood line, which gives me an opportunity, since I've already mentioned his name and our scorekeepers, to tell you that the rest of our crew today is Dick Erickson, Roger Rice, Joe Sukar, and Skip Peabody. Don Riley, our statistician and coordinator. And Phil Rubin, of course, is our producer and director. He thought sure he had the hammer that time, but the 10 would not go. Pending what happens now, and since each of them has a mark right now, it's an eight-pin lead in the match at the halfway point for our challenger, Bob DeBadge. Steve Reno gets himself seven, and he's got the two, five, eight. He has another one. Six in a row. He's just shaking his head because they are falling for him right now. Yes, another one. He's in a hot streak right now where he just has to lay the ball down on the lane. That's about it. Seven in a row. Bob DeBadges does not get the kingpin. Boy, too bad he missed that one. That, uh, that looks like he was going to have it all the way, but the five is still there. gone down to get a piece of wood. Depending upon what Bob DeBadges does in the completed boxes, right now it's tied. So Steve Reno is in the lead after uh, putting together seven marks in a row, seven spares. Oh, and that seven box hurt Bob DeBadges. 
Now Steve Reno, can he continue this streak? Three pieces of wood up against the 4-7 on the left. He's also got the 6-10 on the right. How about this streak? It isn't just that there are eight marks in a row. It's the fact that, I mean, it's sort of like all he has to do is roll it down the lane and something's going to happen. Just a phenomenal streak. Now, if that five went down now, that's the only one that hasn't gone down. One fifty six with eight marks in a row. Now, Bob DeBadges. Three, four, six is what the pins were, but he had to get the three. make those strikes come, however. Getting nine pin drops. Nope. Ball is down in the corner and uh, Ralph Stewart is going to take care of that. It's easy for Ralph now. He's slim and trim. A 10 for 109 and a remarkable turnaround. Bob DeBadges had a 33 pin lead after one. Now he finds himself down by 14. The score at the end of two. Defending champion Steve Reno with that 156 second string 249, Bob DeBadges 235. Here Bob DeBadges on the line. Obviously has to be somewhat discouraged by what he saw Steve Reno do in the uh, middle string. But also must remember that he is Still just 14 pins behind and did have a 126 opening string. Nine. Almost a spread eagle. Left the three on the left, two on the right. No, held that one just too long. Whoever wins this one will have a tough opponent next week because Bob Allison will be here. On the right side. That's the lead. He knew he was going to miss the head pin.
five pin. And wooden to right across it. Another mark. There's a hammer. Everybody knows what three strikes in a row means. An extra bonus of $1,000, and we'll wait till he comes back again. Now Steve Reno working on a spare. Eight is the fill and a good spare lead. The three and the six. He's got it covered. more. Three and ten with wood in between. A very favorable wood. Three marks in a row and another $50 in bonus money for Steve Reno. He's now up to $400, but the story right now is this man, Bob DeBadges, who has two strikes in a row on the board. It looked good coming down there. It looked like it was going to be a fine left pocket hit, so that means the fill on the first one is 17. Four and seven over on the left, and the six pin on the right with some wood. Beautiful try. Beautiful try. Got the six and seven, but left the four. Now it's gone. up on the board with three marks in a row. He got nine for the fill and left the seven pin. Yes, he has it, four marks in a row. $450 in bonus money. Four horsemen right side after he gets six for the fill. That had to be more than a little discouraging to Bob DeBadges. He gets everything except the 10 here to have thrown two strikes in a row and piled up all those extra bonus pins and find that he was matched pin for pin. It was tied 64-64 after four, which meant, of course, that he wasn't able to bite into that 14-pin lead, despite the fact that he had done what he had done. Now we're down to four boxes. One and three are left, as you get a lot of backdoor action. He has it. 
Fair in the seven. Not over yet. That hurt. Three. Four horsemen right side is what he's working. Oh, got just number one. Hit it. Played it a little too fine. Nine. Now it's, it's really tough as he comes down to the final two boxes. And uh, through the completed six boxes of the third, down by 21. And Steve Reno comes back and leaves one pin to pick up for another mark. He's got the three to work on. There it goes! Another spare. The one, three, six, nine. Nine is still there. And it's still there. Twenty four pins. That's the lead. 24 with uh, two boxes to go. Bob DeBadges got the back door action and everything went down except the seven pin. He's on it, Horace Bear. Backdoor action there and almost another strike. A great finish. A great finish. $50 in bonus money for those three marks at the end. And Steve Reno comes back with a strike. Right now, he needs No, he's got it. He's got it. Oh, what a shot! Woo! What a finish! Needs six for 400 and an extra $100 in bonus money. And he already has 450. He got one more. 401. Four oh one. How about that? Well, boys and girls, you saw some bowling there, didn't you? 
What a great finish by both bowlers. When Bob DeBadges came along in the last two boxes of the third string, and Steve Reno had an absolutely fantastic second and third with the 156 and a 152 and a total of 401. What a finish. Wow. And, of course, we're going to go to our high-low jackpot, which is worth $450. Um, and our home viewer jackpot, which is worth $450. After I give you the final score again, Steve Reno, 401, Bob DeBadges, 380. Boy, would I like to see a winner today, because you know what happens, of course, when we have a winner, we dump all these out and start all over again, and it's getting a little bit heavy. But I'm a little bit afraid that because of the total, these guys bowled so well and ran up so much, 781, we don't get too many guesses in that category, so we may be stuffing a few more in there. As you know, and uh, I mean, I didn't get a chance, the thing was too exciting to mention it to you, but all we're asking, of course, is that you send in a postcard and try to guess what the total pinfall would be, both bowlers combined, on a day that you hope I put my fat fingers in here and draw the card that has your name on it. All we make sure that you do is that it's on a postcard, that you send only one per day, that you send it along to this address, which is Candleton Bowling, WCVB TV, 5 TV Place, Needham, Massachusetts, zip code number 02192. And uh, we'll allow you 10 either way. You put down the number, and uh, if the total pinfall happens to be, we'll say 360, and uh, I mean uh, 660 or whatever it might be, we'll give you 10 either way. However, if I draw your card and it's nowhere near the total, which is very possible today with that 781, you will still be rewarded with several prizes. For example, the card I draw today, that person will receive these prizes. An Ames Flower and Garden Tool Set. This four-piece set includes a flower and garden shovel, cultivator, bow rake, and garden hoe with a 42-inch handle. You'll love the smaller, more compact size. And Conair, leader in hair care, brings you the finest products available today. Jerry Redding's European Styling Foam and Milk and Honey Shampoo, plus Conair Professional Styling Brushes. And Schaefer Pens, fine writing instruments that are also fashion accessories. Twist Action Ballpoint, 23-carat gold electroplated accents in a range of colors. Okay, we're going for a 781 today. Let's shake them up a little bit here, if the barrel doesn't break. 781 for $450. Let's dig in here somewhere. Oh, I don't know, way down in here. So we find one. Maybe it's yours. Who knows? All right. This card came from... Uh, Fran Shearman of 282 Nassau Drive in Springfield, Massachusetts. And the guess is 700. Okay. And so it'll be 500 next week. All right. We have $450 in the high low jackpot. And Steve Reynolds had three chances, a couple, couple of chances previously. This is his third. Okay, Bob. Son of a gun. Wasn't to be, I guess. You'll stay up here, won't you? Okay, and uh, Steve will be in the background there while I try to figure out all of this money. You start off like a house of fire, huh? Well, uh, middle string with the killer. I know. Uh, of course, you had to know, I suppose, that if this guy is rolling a 93 that, uh, and you jump into the lead by 33, yeah. that the chances are he's not going to roll another one, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, it's not a bad day for you. I mean, you had uh, $350 plus uh, $150 in bonus money. You also will get, as a runner-up today, a $50 gift certificate from the Super 7 Tire Dealers. And you get, unfortunately, both of them say runner-up. Uh, well, <laughs> maybe the next one. But the next one may say the winner. Okay, nice to see you again, Bob. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. All right, Stephen, you just keep rolling along, don't you, huh? Close, it was close. But you know, that second string, I have never seen, now, I'm not taking anything away from your skill, but did you ever have some luck in that one, huh? I mean, some of uh, the, where the ball would yeah. bounce up and come down again. You were shaking your head after a while. First string, nothing went, and the second string, everything went, no, no matter where I hit it. It felt like, the, one of those things. I, I made the comment, it felt like all you had to do was lay the ball down on the lane in that second one. Something was something good was going to happen. Definitely, I'm glad to. Oh, of course you <laughs> are. <laughs> and it's a nice feeling.
All right, let's see. What did I? What did you get today? You got uh, obviously the um, seven hundred dollars for winning and five hundred big ones in bonus money, especially for that eight in a nice. row, huh? That was nice. And uh, an extra, excuse me, six hundred five hundred during the for the uh, for the marks and for winning the two three, and then by two pins. Uh, 401, huh? An extra hundred dollars. All right. And you also are a marksman of the day, so you get the fifty dollar gift certificate, the big trophy, and I'm going to reward you by giving a nice easy match next week against Bob Allison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. See you next week.